Can you guys see me? Can you guys see me? Awesome. So this is uh, obviously my very first YouTube live. As you can see, I'm still trying to figure out how this thing works. Um, there is this lag, but I can see the chat coming in. Hey guys. Um, so you know, I've is, uh, I've started a little bit early. I started a little bit early uh, just to uh, to test things out, and. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, today what I'm going to be doing is I will be, hey, I'm seeing some familiar names there, uh, Aaron, Steven, Lucas, all of you guys, you know, if some of you, I don't recognize the name, Roman, uh, I'll be seeing it in class soon. Um, but yes, so today is actually going to be, you guys are going to, you guys, you guys get to be my guinea pigs, because uh, I will try to uh, uh, test out this type of streaming setup and see how things goes. And then I'll do a demo. I'll answer some of your questions. And uh, so that's how this thing is going to unfold. And apparently there is a quite a significant lag between what I'm seeing versus uh, the other screen. But I guess on your end, you know, if you're uh, texting uh, 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 your questions in, it should be fine. So um, the official start time is still 10 minutes away. So um, if you guys have any questions, you can actually start asking. Uh, normally, I charge for this type of services. <laughs> um, but you know, here, you know, this opportunity is basically you know, for this uh, uh, type of setting, anything goes. Any question you may have, you want to ask me, just fire it away. Hello, Lung Hao. Um, yeah, just type in your um, uh, type in your your questions here. I mean, the way that I, you know, uh, for those of you that have never taken my classes before, I don't just teach you the technical side of things. I don't just do the technical stuff. You know, just make a sculpture and have everybody follow. That's not how I work. Uh, I very much encourage the uh, the interaction, the interactive process of the discussion. A lot of times. You know, if you're taking my in-person classes, uh, the conversation is what I will be working into the sculpture. You know, it's not a lot of times when I do my designs, they're not pre-planned. I never plan anything when it comes to design work. It's really just, uh, you know, whatever my 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 thinking, my thought process goes, whatever I'm feeling, I will try to work that into the design. So uh, when I have an audience. That's actually quite ideal uh, for my process because I very much enjoy uh, uh, the interactive nature of this type of discussions as well as the um, uh, uh, the uh, the inspiration, you know. So so feel free to uh, uh, you know whatever you guys might want to ask, feel free to type them in. Hello, Lewis, Lucas, everybody. I don't know how many people are watching, but uh, yeah, I mean we're just gonna. Uh, uh, wait for another a few more minutes before we start the official demo. You, as you can see, I already have my little uh, maquette here, just kind of waiting. You know, when people show up late, we can just tell them, "Oh, the demo is already finished. We already sculpted this thing." Uh, but um, you know, no, this is just a really rough uh, build up. You know, we're gonna use this and start the uh, the process. Okay. Awesome, X white hat, signed up for my online class. Welcome, uh, so I will be uh, seeing you soon in class. I mean, so today I will be, uh, um, uh, today I'll be, you know, just doing a quick demo. I won't be teaching a class here. Uh, okay, Elber is asking, what should I do to start learning sculpture? Well, um, the best answer that I can give you is actually you want to start enrolling in my class. <laughs> uh, it's not just to sell you things, but because I really sculpt very differently than pretty much everyone else, or most people, I should say. 
uh, the way I sculpt is very much like it, how an illustrator would draw. By the way, I'm looking this way because my monitor is over here. I have the um, I have the screen set up uh, so that I can see the chats on a bigger screen. So that's why I'm looking a little bit uh, you know off camera. Uh, but the the best way to to start learning sculpture, obviously, you want to get your hands on and start working. Okay, but the way I teach sculpture is not. I don't teach people just to make a thing. Okay, I teach people how to control shapes, how to understand form, so that they can create designs on the fly. But it just so happened at the end of the process, they're also they also will be able to make a thing. So my process is very different from, you know. You have a sketch, you have a design, and then you try to build it, whether in clay or in zebra. That's not how I work. Okay. Um, hello, hey. Uh, if I'm a little slow in uh, reading your uh, your comment, uh, please forgive me. What are the main differences I feel when creating in ZBrush? Um, well, okay. Uh, Lucas is asking this question. What's the main difference? Um, the difference is actually just the uh, the tool itself because um, it's not about just creating the gesture. Okay, I know that when people are learning how to draw, a lot of times you will hear uh, uh, this type of description saying, like, "Okay, we are just creating the gesture here." Uh, no, it's about capturing emotion. Okay, later on you guys will be able to see uh, when I do the demo. It's not about just try to mimic something that has already happened. Okay, my process is about making it happen as opposed to something has already happened, we'll try to capture it. It's not like that, okay? So uh, with, with ZBrush, uh, obviously is a, you know, is a quote unquote 3D program, but it's still 2D. So it is lacking a lot of the actual three dimensionality uh, in the clay sculpting process, but um, you know, I try to offset that by working a little bit differently by, uh, I guess, injecting myself into the process. Okay, so um, Christopher, how to take my class once I've saved up? Yes, definitely, Christopher. Here's the other thing. Uh, if you guys ever, you know, if any of you guys plan on taking my classes, you have to think of why are you taking this class? What are you doing it for? I don't want it to be just a situation where you're spending the money and that's it. A lot of times people coming into my class, I want them to walk away with the knowledge, not only in terms of art, but in terms of business. So that whatever money that they're putting into my tu into the tuition is actually an investment into their future. Um, always you know, get into the habit of whatever you're spending, you have to think of a way of making it back. Okay, that's how I... Uh, look at everything that I do, uh, it has helped uh, helped me tremendously over the years. Okay. Um, hello, TF, my fan from uh, Brazil. Welcome. Um, how much am I sculpting these days besides class? Uh, all the time, every day. Uh, I sculpt not to just make a thing once again. Uh, I sculpt to my sculptures are almost like a journal of my days. Okay, uh, they're basically uh, they're capturing, you know, uh, my my thoughts, my thought process, um, the, uh, the 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 uh, my everyday encounters, things that I've, uh, you know, people that I run into, those kind of things. So, uh, in a way, that is like an emotional outlet of almost like self therapy. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but that's really what it is. So pretty much everything you're seeing behind me, they are sketches like that. Uh, there is a story behind each and every one of those pieces. Uh, so in that sense, I, I sculpt all the time and I create all the time because uh, I never have a shortage of ideas uh, and I want to be able to capture them. You know, then that's how I stay sharp with my, uh, with my skills. <clears throat> Um, okay. Uh, White Hat says, you said in another video, I don't draw a sketch before you sketch in clay. Uh, do you sketch in clay right away? Yes, I do sketch in clay right away. It's just, you know, just like um, if you're able to draw 
with you know a pencil on paper without using any kind of references, you don't need to do something else before you start drawing, right? So if you're able to draw like that, uh, why can't you sculpt like that? You know, and that's how that's what I teach people. You know, that's how just start creating directly three dimensionally. Okay, um, it is um, it is about understanding the basic knowledge of controlling shapes and form, so you can start, uh, you know, so you can start creating directly in clay or uh, in ZBrush. Uh, is this re being recorded? I believe so. <laughs> I'm assuming that YouTube is recording this. Uh, but, you know, this is the first one. You know, you guys are here. Uh, those people that aren't here, uh, I'll try to accommodate them as best that I can. But you guys are my priority. You're here. I very much appreciate the support. It is scorching hot right now in my studio. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you guys are here uh, keeping me company. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, we, we are at tiny little letters here. We are at 328. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to uh, switch over to my, um, um, uh, to my other, other camera, and then we'll, um, we'll get started. Okay, Juan is asking, does depicting beauty solely depend? Oh, dude. Your questions, I'm gonna to have to say for last. I mean, if you, if I start addressing your questions, that's gonna mess up my entire, my entire demo. Uh, but you know, I very much appreciate you being here, man. So I will uh, 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 come back to your question later. Let me uh, just switch camera. All right. So here, uh, so here we have our little uh, character here. You know, just a simple build up. Uh, the product that I'm using today is um, Monster Click. You know, here's your. Uh, I really, uh, I, you know, I really like this this stuff, and is is my uh, my go-to material when I, when it's when I'm doing uh, uh, physical sculpting. Okay, so um, let me see what I should do here. A lot of times, you know, when I'm actually creating. Um, uh, when I'm when I'm creating, yes, uh, ten. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like the stream, everyone. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can. This can really help the channel because I mean I'm not trying to become a YouTuber. I think I'm too old for that. But I like this platform as a way of uh, communicating and connecting with you guys because I really really love art. You know, I I really just live and breathe uh, this stuff, and I enjoy the interactions. I don't see my channel, you know, becoming one of those big YouTube channels because that's not what I do. But um, I do want uh, this content, this material to reach like-minded artists. So if you guys can like, share, and comment, that will be extremely helpful just to get the words out. Because on this platform, on this channel, uh, I am, you know, uh, uh, volunteering my, uh, my service uh, for free here. All right. Hey, my brothers, Schiffler brothers in the house. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, man. Oh, by the way, I I, I want to say that um, a lot of you guys have been reaching out, you know, through DMs, emails, you know, phone calls, whatever. Sometimes some people want to meet up, want to come over to visit my studio. But, man, I've been just so overworked uh, uh, lately. You know, I've been, you know, this, uh, I've been working, I've been, I've been doing like 16 hour work days. No kidding. I'm just working on, you know, film work and, and design stuff. I haven't even started my classes yet. Uh, today, you know, I'm going to be doing pulling another uh, all nighter just working on client work. But because I already announced that I'll be doing this YouTube live thing, so I'm going to have to commit and do this. So if you're my clients, you're watching this, just know that I am being responsible. You will get what you're paying for. Uh, but let's let me uh, get back to this. Okay, so what I have here is a clay maquette, right? It's a clay concept. As you can see, you know he's already starting to move. Like earlier, uh, someone saying, you know, so so uh, you know if you don't do any kind of sketching, if you don't do any kind of preparation, how are you gonna uh, how are you gonna uh, you know create 
of what it is that you're trying to do. Well, the, the way I will do it is I will get my characters to perform, okay? So this is just a regular aluminum wire armature system, and the clay that I'm using is monster clay. But I, as much as I hate to say it, uh, a lot of times, you know, people will ask me saying, you know, what kind of clay, what kind of wires, and thinking that it is, uh, that's everything that they will need to master this stuff. No, it's the knowledge that you need. Uh, you know, it's like that movie Top Gun. It's not the plane, it's the pilot. So here is not the clay, it is the sculptor, all right? So pay attention uh, to the information. If there's things that you don't understand, ask. Don't make assumption that somehow just getting the material, uh, knowing the type of clay, the type of wires the, the sculptor is using, you will be able to create, recreate the results. Uh, it's not as simple as that, okay? And everything that I'm doing here is transferable to ZBrush. Uh, nowadays, when I'm working professionally, 90% uh, of the time I am working in ZBrush, but uh, it's not the software, <laughs> you know, it's the user. It, you, uh, that's why when I teach my classes, I want to share the knowledge. I want to uh, uh, train the artists so that they can become better. Okay, so they're not relying on just the uh, uh, just the clay. They're not relying on just the software to um, uh, you know to 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 try to capture their competitive advantages. Okay, because uh, if you have the software, if you know the software tricks, so does everybody else. If you uh, if you have the clay and if you have the wires, you know, so can everyone else get those things. So the true competitive advantage in this day and age of AI, and that is the uh, uh, that is the forbidden uh, words here. But um, uh, ultimately, though, you know, you want to set up a uh, set up a pipeline, set up a exercise routine, so that you're becoming better every single day. That's what you want. Okay. Uh, all right, Simon. How do you create a skeleton sketches? Do you use references or draw? No, 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 no. Don't create any sketches, don't do not do any references, don't do any uh, drawings or anything like that. Here's the thing, if you are work, if you are a sculptor and if you are uh, training as a sculptor, if you've been sculpting for a while, let's say if you've been sculpting for more than a year, you need to get to a point where you're not working from references, period, okay? When I'm working, 90% of the time, I'm not using references. It's not about bragging. It's not about saying that, oh, so so what, you have a photographic memory? No, I only have a very solid foundation and knowledge of the, of the fundamental building blocks of the shapes that I'm creating. Because once you know to how, to, how to control that, then um, you'll be able to create and design anything you want three-dimensionally in clay without references. Um, but does that mean I will never bring in references? No, I will bring in references at the end when I need to finish certain things. For example, if I'm doing costumes, I don't know the textures, I don't know the patterns, I will need to um, uh, need to bring in references. But if I'm just doing, you know, if I'm just making a character and doing a you know, a simple skeleton or musculature, I I must train myself uh, in such a way that I can that I can create without references, okay, so that I can get to the next stage of the process. And what is that stage? Is telling a visual story. You need to get to the place where you are able to get your characters to perform. And it's not about the posing, guys. It's not about uh, the gesture. It is about uh, the ability to convey the proper sense of emotion, okay? So the only way that you can do that is by, you know, by being able to understand what it is that you're doing and you can freely create it, all right? Here's one thing I want to mention. Um, when it comes to sculptors, um, you know, in my opinion, there are two uh, main different types. We have the builders, 
okay, most people will fall into this category. What I mean by that is tradi traditionally, sculpture has always been used as a way of uh, making things where you have a design and you have a 2D design and then you hire a sculptor to, to bring it into three-dimensional form. So those are the builders. So traditionally, that's how uh, sculptures has always been dealt with. You know, that's how, how it's always been done. But, but there's also this other group of quote unquote sculptors, and these are the designers. Okay. And, uh, that's, that's the thing that I do. That is the category that I, uh, all oftentimes will fall into where I will just have the material and then I will start expressing my characters and my ideas freely, but three dimensionally. Okay. So on this side of the equation, you don't have anything to reference from. You have to uh, know the fundamental building blocks and then express the visual story yourself. Okay. This part oftentimes is overlooked by a lot of, uh, by a lot of quote unquote sculptors. If as a sculptor, if currently your work workflow has always been, let's gather some references, let's make this list, you know, uh, and, and make the plan and, and set aside the time to make this thing. If you've been doing it for a while, I highly recommend you try to break out of this workflow and move on to something else. Because when you are always working from references, when you are always building things, it's almost like you as a guitar player, you've been a guitar player all your life, but you've only been playing other people's songs. You've only been working in a cover band of sorts. Okay, it's time for you to make your own tunes, to make uh, for you to come up and express your own ideas, um, and that is that is the other side of the equation. That is actually the next stage of um, of an evolution of source. Okay, if you if you've always been working on this side, if you are a modeler, character artist, traditional sculptor, you're just you're you're a master at making things perfect try to think and move things to the other side challenge yourself you know what will happen when you work without references can you freely express your ideas okay because once you crack this door open then your your creativity will truly start to flow this is where magic your personal magic will happen okay um so and i know that i'm getting off topic but i just want to get that out there you know, uh, that is something that uh, for uh, for some of you guys to start considering, because uh, sometimes I will hear people saying that, you know, they've been experiencing art blocks. And the way I will see it is, oh, it's because uh, your way of creating is so, uh, uh, so, uh, how do I say it? It's almost like it's, it requires so much prep work. It's so time consuming, right? Instead of being able to create something within the window of, let's say, 30 minutes, you have to prepare for two days and then work for two weeks. You know, then, of course, you're going to get burned out if you're creating and working like this all the time. Okay. All right. Let me just shut the hell up and uh, actually do some sculpting. Um, okay. So I have no idea what I'm doing here. If you guys can just, just uh, casually just Type in some names, whatever topic that uh, uh, that that you can um, uh, that you can think of. Feel free to type them in, and I will try to work them into the design. Okay, uh, because you know it's like if I'm a musician, and I don't want to just just you know grab the guitar and just play something random. I want to be able to you know get some meaning out of the process. And you guys will see, you know, as the, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the comments come in, um, the design will change. Okay. We have, uh, we have about 15 minutes, 15 minutes left for this. So there's plenty of time to try out certain things. Um, yes. And then the other thing, like, uh, thanks Stephen for the, for the comment there. Um, about that, you know, that, that earlier comment about the evolution, right? Uh, I, if you're watching my channel, if you're following my advice, I would imagine your 
probably one of the more mature artists. Okay, you're not just a complete beginner, or at least mentally, you're at a different place. You want something else. You're not here, you know, for like a superhero sculpture because you're not going to get that. But um, <laughs> um, but the other thing that you also, yeah, I think all artists should uh to should contemplate at some point is what is the next stage of your evolution right if you've been doing certain things for a long time it is time for a change right just like you know people go go to the gym and they work out if, they, if they've been doing the same exercise for the past i don't know 5 10 20 years do you think that their muscles will grow of course not you need to try something different to challenge yourself uh in order for your body to get into this place of shock, right? You have to, and then it has no choice but to get stronger and grow. Um, you know, one of the uh, one of the uh, the unexpected thing with uh, AI, there's that un, you know, that's there's that forbidden term again, uh, <laughs> is that I, you know I'm fully aware of of how evil it is and uh, all the damages that it's been causing, but at the same time, uh, seeing some of the images that that AI programs are able to create uh, actually make me uh, 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 feeling excited and thrilled. Not because, oh, I, I want to copy that. No, I want to defeat it. I want to fight it, right? If I see a better sculptor, um, I want to challenge that sculptor, not for ego purposes, but just like if you're a tennis player, you run into someone who plays tennis really well, what do you want to do? You want to play that person. You know, it's not because, you know, you want to walk away and tell, tell, tell other people, oh, I was able to defeat that person. No, you want to challenge yourself. You want to up your game. If anybody is thinking differently and creating differently, you know, uh, I, want to, I want to challenge that person. I want to have an art jam with that person because in the process, I will feel energized and uh, uh, I will find the inspiration again, not visual inspiration as in I will be able to copy this other person. No, it will be a place where, you know, emotionally I will be lifted to a different place so that I can have the drive to keep pushing forward, right? So, um, I mean, opportunities like that are all around us, just like challenges. But, uh, you know, as artists, you don't want to just develop your artistic skills. You know, you want to be able to to improve your, um, you know, your 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 mental state as well. Okay, you want to become, uh, if you want to excel at this thing that you do, it, it will take much way more than just technical skills. You know, uh, for you to uh, 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 for you to be able to to successfully navigate this world okay we are all in the same boat here you know uh uh we're everybody listening in is a human person <laughs> so we're all in the same boat here we are all trying to embrace or hold on to this human art form um and uh, some of you guys are sculpting mostly you know in digital inside zbrush and look at me i'm still sculpting in clay <laughs> you know i'm still uh, trying to make this work, but uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I know that some people will will say that, oh, but but you're Simon Lee, you know, you've you're already established, uh, you know, you have you've made a name for yourself. Of course, people are going to listen. Uh, yes, I do have more, you know, bargaining power than when I first started. But to be honest, even when I first started. Uh, I was already against a, a you know a lot of you know a, like in, like very difficult odds that I had to overcome in order to uh, you know to even find a place for myself in the uh, field of concept design for movies you know so turn that into a habit doesn't matter where you're currently at um, you know there's there's always room for growth not just in terms of your your arts, but also in terms of your uh, your mental self. You know, to become a champion, you can't just build your muscles. You also have to forge your heart, right? So 
if you, if you think that oh I'm just gonna be I'll be able to just you know just lock myself in the room and do art and stay home and I'll be fine people will find me and discover me no that's not how it works okay um big alien mod in the tummy I don't know what that means dude um all right uh duh, 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 duh. all right I'm just looking at the um looking at the comments here okay I'm feeling a little bit lost let me just bring in some tools you know so far I've been just using my hands um yes at some point I will I will do a proper tour of my studio but not today today it's just uh we're gonna be doing something else um All right, let me uh, switch camera. It's probably easier to see here. Spikes and curves. Uh, when I'm creating by myself, a lot of times I will have music going so that I want to get into the mood uh, that I want to capture, okay? So most of my pieces, they're mood-driven, they're emotion-driven. They're not visually inspired, quote-unquote, inspired by anything. So I don't, you know, I don't go on art station. I don't browse the internet and look for art or, quote-unquote, inspiring ideas no i have um i mean that that would be the the topic for another video is that you if you're able to develop that sense of beauty if you're able to capture uh that sense of rhythm and flow you will be inspired by anything and everything you can you can go to a park you get inspired not the visual uh exposure but the um um but the uh, you know the sense of awe, the sense of you know uh, uh, the, the you know the, the the sense of fulfillment, the sense of beauty that you're able to walk away with, and if you're able to capture that, then you'll be in a very different place. All right. So right now I have both. I have the character's legs just kind of you know drill into the wood which is quite limiting as you can see like this guy is almost like he's trying to break free he's like let me lose effort you know so i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up his leg so that he's out of that thing and start um try to find his i guess try to find the meaning of his existence Okay, just like what we're all trying to do with our lives, right? Why are we here? You know, why, what are you doing here? Like at, I don't know, like four in the afternoon in Los Angeles time or wherever you're at. Um, you know, we're trying to we're trying to have some fun. We're trying to figure out certain things. Um, Okay, let me just, uh, instead of going too crazy with this, um, I should probably keep this simple. Sometimes I have a tendency with my actual classes, with my in-person classes, I will go really crazy with with the, uh, the changes. But I just forgot that, you know, I'm working in front of a camera. I have to pay attention to the, uh, <laughs> to the Zoom and focus and all that. So let me try and keep this simple. <clears throat> all right. Okay, how thick, uh, uh, how thick is the armature 
I'm using. I use some very, very thin armatures. Okay, this. Okay, here's the trick. If you're relying on your armatures to keep the character balanced, then you're in trouble. You always gonna have to have really sturdy armature. But the way I have my characters worked out is that if you're to freeze frame this uh, video right now or later on, and you just watch, if you're to analyze the balance, the weight distribution from any angle, okay, you will be able to find the balance, okay? And this is not the result of muscle memory, but this is the result of understanding actual weight distribution and how the human body will function or can function, you know, to, uh, to capture those kind of uh, uh, those kind of results. All right. So um, that is the key. It's not because of how strong the wire is. All right. It's like, you know, when you're learning how to ride a bicycle, if your goal is to just stay on the bike and not fall down, the best thing to do, well, you know, when you're a kid is actually keep the training wheels on. When you have super sturdy armature wires, that's the equivalent of you having training wheels on the bicycle, all right? But once you take away those heavy duty wires, can you still get your characters to balance? That's actually how you and I and all of us here work. Okay, the way that we're controlling our bodies is not because we have, you know, we have we have access to certain things to hold on to. No, but we're constantly shifting our body's weight. We're redistributing our body's weight um, and achieving balance. Okay. And that is what you can do with something like this. All right. Once you have this knowledge, you will be able to recreate any frame that you want, okay, without any kind of references, is because you're able to um, put your own experience of controlling your own body into the creation, into the 3D world, all right? That is the realization. That is the knowledge, you know, you, you, uh, you'll be able to walk away uh, uh, from this with. It's not the gesture, okay? The gesture, what is the gesture? The gesture is, once I have this quote unquote pose, you know, everybody, you know, who's never done any kind of live drawing, uh, by the way, I've never done a single live drawing in my entire life. Uh, anybody who ever done a live drawing will be able to, to just draw this, oh, here's the gesture. But if you rewind the video and watch what I did, my process was I have to make it happen. I have to push it to this moment instead of, having a photograph of references and try to recreate something that has already happened. My process is about making it happen, okay? If you're able to make it happen, then you can make something that is static but appears to be moving, okay? And now we're just dealing with human characters, right? If we're, if we're working with animal characters, we can do the same thing because movement and the principle of movement is one and the same for all living things on Earth. Even though we all have uh, different ana ana you know, anatomy, anatomical structures, but that would be a situation like, you know, if you're a mechanic and you're, you know, used to fixing American-made cars, and someone showed up with a uh, uh, with a with a BMW, you know, you open up the hood, you most likely you'll be able to figure it out. You know, you might be a little bit. Uh, 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 puzzled in the beginning, but the principles should be the same, right? So understanding human movement, you will be able to um, to understand animal movement as well, all right? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, this, uh, this uh, YouTube live thing is, I guess, one of the challenges that there's no audio. I'm not able to hear you guys. So I have to really just watch my stupid screen with my big old glasses, and it's getting difficult for me to uh, to read uh, this tiny little letter. It's just scrolling, but let me let me try and um, finalize this.
and figure out a design. Okay, I have no idea how this thing will um, turn out. Notice I'm using my hands most of the times, right? Um, as opposed to my feet. No, I, uh, you know, what I meant was I'm, uh, I'm using mostly my hands as the tools. Um, obviously, there is a limit on the amount of detail I can do with only my hands, all right? Um, but the thing is, when I work like this, this process actually forced me, uh, is forcing me to stay uh, with the, uh, the primary forms. Okay, I'm, I'm forced to work on only the big shapes, meaning because I don't have access to, um, to detailing tools uh, deliberately. I'm not using detailing tools until I have the big shapes all figured out. And um, um, so when I'm working like this, I'm limiting my, um, uh, my tool set so that uh, I'm, I'm addressing the big shapes and the main issues at this point, all right? Yes, interns, who wants to uh, intern for me? If you're in Los Angeles, send me a DM. We'll talk, okay? Come to my studio and help me read my uh, <laughs> read the prompts. <laughs> Thanks, Joe, for that uh, for that suggestion. <clears throat> but yeah, this is really you know first time trying this format. Um, One thing I want to point out to you, uh, uh, digital artists, is that as I'm working in clay, the scale that I'm working in is is always going to stay at this at this level, right? Because this is how big this thing is. So my brain actually um, functions at a certain scale, meaning I'm looking at this and I'm and I'm processing the information at this scale. All right. But when you're working digitally, because you're able to zoom in and out, holy shit, I'm just like sweating like a pig here. Uh, <laughs> um, because you're able to zoom in and out. So it actually triggers a different process in your brain. So your brain is actually jumping from, you know, designing for a bigger piece versus designing for a smaller piece. So there is actually that that constant shift that you're dealing with. So um uh, because for me, if I'm making a sculpture this big versus I'm making a sculpture 10 times as big, my brain will process the information differently. The level of details that I'll be addressing is also different. So um, so keep that in mind. If you're, when you're working digitally and you're constantly bouncing back and forth, zooming in and out, um, there is a biological process that is happening in your brain, neurological process. Uh, that is actually affecting your decision making sometimes, or definitely it is pulling your your attention away from the subject at hand. Sometimes I'm sure you know you've run into the situation where you should be working on the big shapes, but you get just sucked into the details because you're able to zoom in. Your 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 mind is gonna uh, drift because of that. So uh, be very mindful of what it is that you do. So if I'm only working with my hands, you know, as my primary tools at this stage, I'm limiting my ability to detail. So I can, I'm forcing myself to stay with the big shapes. Okay, I need to take care of the primary shapes first before I can jump into the secondary. And that is some of the things I will teach in my classes. You know, how do you how do you move from primary to secondary to tertiary, and how do you stay in secondary? Um, uh, that is one of the things that I've uh, I, I'm, I'm calling uh, the the kaleidoscope concept is something that I that I you know uh, came up myself. Um, 
you can literally stay in that stage and your creatures will be just out of this world detailed and complex but still you'll be able to maintain that rhythm uh whether you're doing creature design or even character design the same principle can apply but you know this is not the the platform for those kind of discussion uh but i will be covering you know those kind of things in my classes um by the way i know that i mentioned my classes quite a few times but i'm not here to push my classes uh i'm already extremely busy um the way it is uh with my film work but i do enjoy teaching but I, because i do enjoy the interaction with artists like earlier uh one of the commenter juan uh, one of my one of my favorite students actually you know always asks some very very insightful questions you know which makes the the class discussions extremely uh rewarding okay i i hate to be sitting in a class where we're all talking, you know, all that we're talking about are just technical stuff. Okay, I hate it because I, I find that to be a waste of my time and a waste of my students' time. If if when I'm doing a class and all I'm teaching you is okay, this is how I sculpt the head and this is how I sculpt the hand. Okay, there are tons of YouTube videos you could be watching, so don't even bother uh, coming here because that's not how I work. Uh, and that is, you know, I shouldn't be wasting your money by teaching you something like that. Uh, I will be able to cover those things, but I want to show you a different way of looking at it. You know, why are you learning this? Well, how are you going to apply it? You know, uh, how is it going to help your career? How is it going to help your business? How is it going to help you find your identity as an artist? You know, uh, what kind of artist are you? You see how all these questions are they're almost like they're non-art related, okay? But they has they have everything to do with the individual because I I think that uh, the um, um, uh, forging the artist, like I mentioned earlier, forging the heart of the champion is so important, okay? Especially in the current time that we're in. Um, uh, you know, without this becoming a whole different discussion, uh, people are having a hard time. You know, artists are having a hard time, but it it shouldn't uh, stop us from uh, using this gift that we that we have um, as creators. You know, I don't know how how much longer uh, this clay sculpting thing will um, will stay. And I hate to say the use, hate to use the word popular because I don't think it's popular anymore. But it's just a medium, okay? To me, clay is just a, a clay sculpting or zebra sculpting. Even it's just a way of me communicating with the world, okay? Uh, what matters is the message. What matters is the idea. This thing is by itself is meaningless. It's just the means to an end, right? Um, so. When you look at it like that, then you should be able to, to realize that there are actually many different ways that you could be advancing your art. Doesn't matter what stage you're currently in, okay? Um, there's always a way to make it better, make it more efficient. I should, make, I should say make it more efficient. And you, sh you should also be able to make your uh, art career more successful, okay? Um, because, I mean, even though that's not a guarantee thing, you know, no one's going to be able to guarantee you that. No one's going to be able to tell you, yeah, I mean, you just do A, B, C, and D, X, Y, and Z, and then you'd be successful. No, there's no such thing. But uh, if you adopt a different mindset and approach this thing differently, then perhaps you have a better chance of, uh, you know, uh, finding success or uh, finding personal growth. And um, in the process, you know, help others, inspire others. I think that's what make uh, this whole thing uh, worth doing. You know, that's what make this whole uh, uh, process more meaningful. Okay.
Uh, what is the best way to learn balance and movement? Okay, without getting into too deep. All right, you already carry the knowledge as in you're able to control your own body freely, okay? Like I always tell my students, you know, when you got up this morning, you, you didn't need to look up for ref, look up references in order to get out of the bed, did you? Right? You just got out of the bed. You know, you probably got into work without even realizing. Why? Because you're able to control your body to such a such a degree that you're able to do things freely without even thinking. That is the ability, the ability that you already possess. So to learn movement and balance. You have to understand the, you know, in the simplest terms, understand the uh, um, uh, or memorize the mo the movable joints on the human body, okay, and then um, try to move those joints in such a way that it can counter gravity. You see how as I'm speaking, I'm already swaying, moving my body from side to side because I'm already tapping into the feeling side of the process. Um, Movement is something that needs to be felt. All right. The reason why so many artists are not able to capture movement or understand movement after spending so many years, you know, doing going to live drawing sessions, doing this, doing that, and they're still at a loss of not being able to, to do it properly is because they're trying to learn something dynamic with a static approach. All right. If you want to learn movement and understand movement by just trying to remember all the different frames, unless you have a photographic memory like you know, like my friend Kim Jong Gi did, you will never gonna be successful. Okay, uh, someone like him, you know, at at that level of of genius ability, but he's also built differently. He was built differently. He had a photographic memory. He can actually remember things like that. All right. So if you're using that type of approach of just doing endless live drawing sessions and trying to internalize the information, then you will, you're always relying on memorization. OK, I have a terrible memory. <laughs> I don't even remember what I ate this morning. But what I what I do have is an understanding of this system. Once I understand the system, I can make this system work and deliver the results. Just like if you understand your body, you can make your body work without understanding what you did. Okay, keep that in mind. Well, that is the simplest way to describe this. But the, the good news is it actually does not take long if you just want to understand this thing and connect uh, the, this newfound knowledge with this experience that you already possess of controlling your own bodies, you will be able to transfer this knowledge onto uh, animals. You will be able to make your creatures look like they're moving, look like they're real, all right? It's not because you have a bunch of photos, no, but because you're able to tap into that sense of life. This thing feels alive, right? You want to, you want to, um, you want to tap into that. You want to be able to capture those kind of feelings. Okay. All right. Okay. I have no idea what this this guy is. Um, Right now, I'm just putting shapes on here, OK? To just block out the um, block out the silhouette. Um, but three dimensionally, OK? See how I'm constantly turning this thing, OK? Even the way I'm arranging the lines, okay, there's this spread of the fabric of the loincloth, whatever you want to call it. Could be chainmails, you know. I haven't decided yet. That is the trick of putting in the big shapes and then dividing it up later, right? Initially, from a distance, when you're not able to make out the details, you have to be able to um, uh, find some interesting shapes, or at least 
you you want to find a way that you can capture the audience's attention. And going back to movement, okay, what is behind everything that I'm doing right now? What is underneath all this is a sense of movement, a sense of presence that looks alive. That that is you know that is um, reminding people of a person of a character. It's not. Don't just think of it as oh, this just posing. No, 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 you want to get beyond that. Okay, people don't win an Oscar because they're able to speak. Don't win an Oscar because they're able to open their mouth. They're able to wave their arms. No, because they're able to convey a stronger sense of emotion and believability. Don't trivialize the ability to capture emotion with. He's really good with poses, or you know, we're just capturing poses here. No, you know, you want to think beyond that. All right, there's so much more underneath all this. Okay, right now because I am um, doing this demo and watching the monitors and speaking to you and try trying to not sound like a stupid person, <laughs> so it is a little bit distracting. Um, but as you can see, at the same time, it also makes for a more challenging experience and interesting experience. You know. Uh, I mean, if I really know what I'm doing, uh, I shouldn't be afraid with all these constraints or restrictions or whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> So right now I'm just trying to grab some clay off screen. As you can see right now, one thing I want to point out is if you look at the anatomy, this is really crappy, right? Because there's the accuracy is completely off, not completely, but this at least I would say, you know, 40% off, right? But why is it working? You know, it's because I'm connecting with you on an emotional level, okay? It's a visceral feeling that, oh, this guy looks alive, okay? Again, not because of the posing, but because of the presence, all right? I know that uh, there are uh, people out there will tell you, no, you need to learn anatomy perfectly uh, in order to capture movement better. Um, no, not really. The, and an example would be, you know, if you go to Disneyland and you see a person dressed up as uh, Mickey Mouse, right? So this person is in a thick Mickey Mouse suit, right? Uh, this person is walking around, and, but you know it is a person underneath that suit. Why? It's because are you? Is, is it because you're able to see this person's biceps, triceps, his musculature, anything like that? No, it's because you're able to recognize the body language. All right. So that is the key. If you're able to capture the body language, you can actually have crappy anatomy <laughs> and still make it work, okay? But the key is, if you can make it work from the get-go, then you have plenty of time of going back and forth and trying to make the anatomy perfect later on, all right? Okay, for those of you uh, coming from an illustration background, I want you to start seeing uh, the composition that's kind of emerging. All right.
you don't even know what this is. But uh, because I don't even know what this is. But the thing is, what 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 is resonating with you is the sense of rhythm, the sense of visual flow. Okay, because that's the sense of harmony, uh, the sense of beauty we all possess. But we don't necessarily all have the ability to explain it, to quantify it. But is there? Okay, um, is actually one of the things I'm having a discussion on with uh, one of my very annoying private students. Um, just kidding. I, I love my students, but um, uh, sometimes it it is actually quite eye opening just to revisit some of the the concepts that we've been taking for granted, the ideas uh, that we've been taking for granted. Oh, just make it beautiful. How do you make it beautiful? Let's just polish everything. You know, that's a given. You know, uh, to be able to polish everything. That's almost like the fundamentals of being a sculptor, but it doesn't mean that I have to do it every single time. <laughs> because if I were to do it, it's by choice, not because I'm, you know, I have to. No, I don't have to do anything. Uh, I will stop whenever I want to, because uh, to me, making art is basically uh, a way of me communicating with the world. All right, so. Uh, one time, you know, some guy asked me, one of my subscribers asked me, uh, I think it was one of, in one of the comments, he was saying, you know, at what time, at what point would you call a piece of artwork finished, right? Um, I didn't have time to make a recording, but uh, my answer to someone like that will be, you know, when I'm done talking, right? So what do you mean by that, Simon? Well, it means every piece of artwork that I'm creating is a statement that I'm making. It's a conversation that I'm having with uh, my with my audience. Okay, so my way of communicating could can be, you know, maybe I'm sending a text, maybe I'm writing an email, right? Maybe I'm writing an essay, or you know, maybe I'm even writing a novel, depending on the uh, the amount of time that I have. But the thing is, if you look at it this way, so if your art is your way of communicating with the world, then you could be communicating with just the text, which means just a few words. I just want to get the idea across. Or uh, I'm writing an email. I want to tell you a little bit more. Or I want to write an essay. I could be writing a whole, you know, whole book, um, depending on how much time I have, how much information I want to disperse. That's how I look at my art. So if I just do something in 30 minutes, that is the message I want to convey in 30 minutes. I have to be able to deliver the results in 30 minutes. It doesn't mean that that's all I'm capable of. It's, it only means I only have 30 minutes to spend here. You're only getting 30 minutes of my time. Um, but if I have to make sure everything is polished and, and cleaned up and detailed, um, Okay, then who's going to pay me for my time? <laughs> because my time is very valuable. I don't have, I don't have time to waste. I don't like to waste other people's time, and I don't want other people to waste my time. So, um, um, if something that has to be super polished and finished and detailed, then that is the equivalent of uh, me doing a presentation or you doing a presentation. Because when you're doing a presentation, you have to prepare. You know, you have to uh, write stuff down, summarize and rehearse, edit, so that make sure everything is precise. You're presenting yourself professionally. You know, you're making sure everything is being delivered professionally. Okay, but that's not the real you. That is a more polished version of you, right? So that is a way of communication. But that is also a a quote unquote more professional way of communicating an idea, but it's not the real you. Even though every time you look professional. But that's not how your friends will uh, know you by, or that's not how people will uh, will remember you uh, uh, with, right? I mean, there. Uh, when you're with your friends, what are you? I mean, how do you behave? You just open your mouth, you open your big mouth, and then you say whatever. You get offended, and then uh, you get into an argument and whatever. But just kidding. But the thing is, when you're with your friends, with your loved ones, you're much more at ease. You should be able to communicate. And express yourself freely, right? So with art, that is also available. 
So if you're at working as a sculptor, get into the mindset of, I don't need to finish everything. If I'm just trying to convey an idea, I just, why don't, if I just want to say something and I only have 30 minutes, I'm going to spend 30 minutes and try to say this thing. But here's the key. You need to train yourself to get to the point. Okay, you don't want to work from a place where you're always thinking of details. You're going to detail every single thing. Then in that situation, 30 minutes is not enough. Okay, when you have only 30 minutes, just like when you're sending a text to your friend, you have to get to the point, right? So in terms of textual information, you have to do it this way. Visual communication is the same thing. You have to train yourself so you're focusing on the main ideas. You have to uh, focus on the focal point, right? If you look at my sculpt here, this whole freaking hour, I've been just yapping and not doing much sculpting, but you get, uh, you kind of get what I'm trying to do here. You At least you get what this person is also trying to figure out. He's like, you know you know like what you know what am i doing here i'm just standing here this whole time while you're just just yapping away um but um <clears throat> the thing is if all the key elements are there okay then i can go back and clean it up okay and figure out what those things are all right right now i'm just rolling up pieces of clay here and there it might look like random but they're not Okay, um, there because if I were to turn this, you know, and I'm I'm sure it's, you know some. Uh, I mean, if you're to do a screen cap, you'd be able to paint over this any way you want from any angle, and you will have a balanced character. Is because um, you know the uh, uh, my ability to capture rhythm and. Uh, trying to get the idea to cross, uh, or at least I should say I'm working from that angle of uh, trying to control uh, the uh, the key information, okay, so that so that I'm not wasting my time spending an hour just detailing the face. And let me try to show you, this is how I treat the clay, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm old, but I'm not that old. Um, uh, I want to get to the... Uh, uh, and especially because I'm old, I want to get to the point. I want to get to the essence of the discussion. Uh, things are more interesting to me. Okay. So, all right. So I have like five minutes left. Let me try to. Okay, Simon Lee, what are your main references in the world of traditional sculpture? Uh, I, I, I don't have references, dude. I don't use references. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes uh, when I do this type of classes, it feels like I'm doing a TED Talk more than doing a, uh, a art demo because as a teacher, I've been teaching for, uh, I think, I believe it's 14 or 15 years already. Uh, I've taught so many professional artists. And a lot of times what I've noticed is that uh, what's holding people back is not uh, a lot of times it's not what they imagine it to be. You know, they're thinking is this, is that, and they have a, a, they have a preconceived notion of how things should work. But uh, from my perspective, a lot of times uh, they're they're really missing the point. Okay, um, there's this saying. 
uh, I'm paraphrasing here, you know, true discovery is not about finding new land, but about having new eyes, okay? Uh, just because you've been doing things for so long in a certain way, it doesn't mean that they're always right. Okay, just think back at, at how many people around you, how many of our friends and relatives, you know, uh, they're full, you know, full, full grown adult, but it's just how messed up they were as a kid. And, you know, those childhood problems, they end up bringing with them uh, into their adult lives, right? I'm sure, you know, many, many of us will end up raising our hands. Um, so what do we do? Well, we maybe it is deserving for us to uh, take another look at ourselves and try to um, uh, try to make improvement and re-examine some of those assumptions. Okay, because if we had the wrong assumption to begin with, then uh, then uh, doesn't matter how hard we work, you know, we will just be uh, traveling down the wrong path, uh, you know, in the long run. So this is actually better to have some introspection sometimes, just to, uh, to take another look, you know, if you will. All right. So I think I'm going to stop the, uh, the sculpting part right here because um, today is just really our my first uh, stream test. So next time, definitely, I will hire uh, an intern to come in here and read the uh, the comments for me. Um, but you know, as far as the uh, the demo goes, um, look at it from any way, any angle you want. Um, and this thing can keep changing, by the way. Um, by the way, this guy will have a face of a monkey. So, you know, that will change things up. Or maybe a, a mere cat. Who knows? But that's the beauty of it. Because I'm only using my, my, my stubby fingers. I'm not able to do the details. But it's, set, it's allowing me to set up the big shapes so that later I can break it down. I can break it apart and move on to secondary and move on to tertiary. All right? Okay, let me, cool, let me uh, move back to uh, to the comments here. Monster Clay Soft, Eugene asked, no, this is Monster Clay Medium, but in the uh, 100 degree hot California sun. Um, this is doo -doo 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 -doo, Simon Lee, what are your, uh, okay, I already answered that. Um, okay. And from a for a character like that, do you explore design making some lore or trying to discover? Um, yes. Okay. So uh, one of the questions was asking, you know, if if it's a character design, if there are some cultural elements to it, uh, do we add some lore or anything, you know, some cultural specific uh, components to it? Most definitely, because. All I have here is just the big shapes. None of these are being uh, properly addressed. Like if I were to change the uh, the headgear, turn it into something I don't know, uh, 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 South uh, East uh, Southeast Asian kind of thing, you know, or Mayan, or anything, you know. But right now, all I have are the big shapes. Okay, there's nothing specific. They're just giving me a general direction. Just like if I'm writing a song, you know, the, in the, the first uh, recording that uh, can be super rough, but once I'm able to set up the main uh, um, uh, tune, uh, the music itself, then I can take it into the recording studio and break it down any way I want and engineer it any way I want, but it will be something worthy of, uh, you know, producing or engineering to a higher level. Right, but you don't want to start writing songs with engineering in mind. If you're trying to design, but the first uh, um, concern that you have is how do I make this more detailed? How do I make this more polished? That would be like someone trying to write a song by by immediately thinking, I'm going to be using a lot of cowbells for this, right? I'm going to be using a particular sound for this. No, you write the song first. You bring in the instruments later. 
you bring in the engineering later. There has to be a progression, okay? Just because you have the tools doesn't mean that you should be using them all the frigging time, right? So um, keep that in mind. All right, guys, uh, that's it for now. I'm going to have to go back and, and continue working until midnight, you know, working on this really badass movie project, I uh, wish I could show you. But uh, just rest assured, I'm not able to show you, obviously, because of NDA, but just rest assured that I am kicking ass and taking names, <laughs> having fun, obviously having a lot of fun. But I really appreciate all of you guys uh, joining me um, uh, with this stream. I hope that YouTube has recorded this that I we can watch this. But if 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 it's if it's not recorded, at least you're able to watch this and watch me embarrass myself uh, or try not to embarrass myself, I should say, in front of the camera for the past hour. I really really appreciate you guys. Okay, so uh, but uh, by all means, uh, like, share, and comment if the, when this video or the recording of this is published. Uh, help me to get some words out so that I can, uh, you know, send this message out to more people. Okay, because when I, uh, when I'm, uh, by the way, I'm completely a self-taught artist. Okay, I've been I started sculpting when I was maybe five, six years old, right? Uh, everything uh, that I've uh, that I've came to discover was through trial and error. You know, obviously I read some books here and there, but mostly um, is you just just through experiment, uh, experiments, trial and error. Uh, but uh, I was able to find cer a certain uh, system and method that I believe is very, very practical and effective to uh, to the artists working in the industry today. And I'm talking about films and games, okay? Uh, I work in the film business. You know, I, uh, I also uh, do character designs for video games from time to time. Um, but I'm a designer, I'm designing in clay. I'm designing in ZBrush. So someone like this, you know, uh, if I'm speaking and try to make sense of what I'm saying, you know, I'm able to get it to this level. Uh, so to imagine if I have an hour uninterrupted, undisturbed, how much further I can push this. Okay. It doesn't mean that I'm good. It only means uh, uh, I think that this, well, I am good, <laughs> but uh, but uh, the more important thing is uh, I do have a system that is uh, that is very uh, efficient and effective, and is very very applicable uh, to the commercial artists working in an industry today. So it doesn't matter if you're working in ZBrush, if you're working in Clay. Uh, the concept is about making changes to your brain, to your understanding, to your realization of reality. So that you will use your tools, you'll start using your tools differently and create different results. Okay, so that is the key. Uh, it's not about it's not a, not about the clay. It's not about the medium. It is about you. Okay, uh, let that sink in and keep that in mind. Uh, I'll definitely try to make uh, some videos about this topic because when you put the focus back onto yourself. Um, things will just become a lot more beautiful like it's a lot more promising a lot more hopeful right um because even at my old age i'm still full of hope you know i love art there every single day i'm learning something new um every you know uh every, every night when i have insomnia i'll be up you know and writing down ideas on my phone not design ideas but new discoveries i've I've realized about the process of making art, about the ability to capture beauty, okay, and about the, uh, um, I guess, um, uh, um, uh, you know, with the more efficient method of communicating with the world, with your audience, and building up your brand, and not just being happy with whatever you're creating, but also uh, trying to win over an audience, building up a tribe. You know, building up a following, uh, finding people that will uh, respond and resonate with what you're saying, right? That is important because um, when you're making art, sure, that could be a solo sport. But when you're trying to make good art, that is a collaboration. You will need your audience's participation, okay? You can see uh, where that conversation will end up. It's much deeper than... 
oh, good art. It's just, you know, better values, you know, better colors, better gesture, better anatomy, better this, better that. No, 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 no. Uh, it's much deeper than that. Okay. It doesn't mean that it it doesn't mean that it is uh infinitely complex. It only means that maybe, you know, if you don't realize this, you need to develop a better perspective on how to look at reality, how to look at this world. Okay. Because if you're trying to navigate the art world, whether as a freelancer, as an individual, or as an employee, you know, you owe it to yourself to learn this knowledge, to, to, uh, to develop this ability so that, um, you know, you can call your own shot, right? Uh, here I am, you know, I started streaming at 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a work day. I'm supposed to be working for my clients, but I'm not ashamed, you know. Uh, uh, I'm a freelancer. I am being responsible. I've been putting in 16-hour work days for my multiple clients and multiple projects, okay? And I am delivering quality uh, design ideas, okay? But uh, at the same time, I also realize what I'm worth, okay? I know my value. I know what I'm bringing to the table, all right? So I will uh, commend respect from people, but I am being responsible to everyone else well, all right? So those kind of things, I know that I'm just kind of going all over the place, but um, I mean, those are my parting thoughts. You know, I want to just kind of plant a seed in your brain that uh, this is so much more than just making a cool looking sculpture. Okay. This is about making a better you. All right. Because you is what make this whole thing worthwhile. It's not the sculpture. This thing, I can knock it on the floor or just let it melt or set it on fire, whatever. <laughs> But uh, this experience of me communicating with you guys uh, is valuable, all right? So this thing will stay on the shelf. It will always be a reminder of, you know, me communicating with all of you guys, uh, 119 people. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, such a small number. But, um, but it's fine. I appreciate each and every one of you, okay? Because my goal is I want to build on my tribe. I want to build up my following. I want to uh, uh, capture the attention and the imagination um, of the people that that can that will agree to the message that I'm sending. You know, if you don't agree with me, by all means, just you know, uh, go elsewhere. That's perfectly fine. But there are seven billion people in this world. Okay, there are plenty of people for me to reach out to, try to connect with, um, and I believe. Uh, myself, you know, I have this belief that I'm here to serve a purpose. And I believe each and every one of you are also here to serve a purpose. You're not just here to make a cool sculpture, to claim to uh, to tell someone you're an artist. No, you're here to live your life as an artist and to leave your mark as an artist um, so that people um, will remember that you ever existed. Um, you know, it might be some people, some of you might be saying, dude, I just started sculpting last week. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's too far ahead. It's fine. You know, if you're a kindergartner, if you're looking at someone who has a PhD degree, you say, hey, man, this, this guy is, you know, is way ahead of me. You know, it's like, you know, I'm not going to be able to touch this person's achievement, blah, blah, blah. Um, but if that kindergartner were to make that uh, comment to you, what are you going to tell that person? What are you going to tell that kid? Tell that kid, it's fine, you're in kindergarten. You just work your way up. You just work towards that goal because one day you will be able to get your PhD. And you need to think of it as not just in terms of your artistic growth, but also in terms of your personal growth, okay? In terms of your you know, mental toughness, your mental readiness, uh, your financial savviness, okay? Uh, your physical and mental well-being. It's the whole package. Right. Um, keep that in mind. The next time we do our your we are uh, our uh, my uh, nonsensible TED talk, uh, I will get into more details. But I uh, just want to plant the seeds and leave those messages out there. You know, for some of you find this resonating, uh, good. Maybe start digging uh, into into the stuff yourself, uh, or 
Just start looking for different things. You know, remember, you know, true discovery is not about finding new lands, but getting new eyes. All right. When you see the reality differently, you will find different possibilities. And more importantly, you will have hope. And hope is what will drive us or keep us moving forward. You know, and um, and that's what that is the um, uh, I guess the recipe for uh, for our true uh, personal growth in the long run. Uh, and when you move yourself onto that path is a truly, truly beautiful thing. All right. Have a great day, you guys or night, wherever you are. I really appreciate you uh, coming to this chat. I hope to see you guys again in the future at some time. All right. Take care.